chaos. Destruction. Mass hysteria. You would think these scenes were taken straight out of an apocalyptic movie. Yet what if I told you this was the result of one of the greatest collaborations we've seen in recent history between two legendary companies? This is the story of the Moon Swatch. It all started on March 26, with a collaboration between two iconic brands. Omega, who's infamously known for being the first watch on the moon, and Swatch, who's infamously known for being in your father's junk drawer from the 80s. These two brands decided to release a watch that was an exact homage to their famous Speedmaster. They called this the Moon Swatch, and it was released in several different colorways. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. There, you get the picture. Little did anyone know that these bioceramic little beaters were going to cause a stir around the world. Soon stores sold out. People waited hours only to be turned away. Flippers started to profit off people's insecurities. Fleet cars were deployed to cities around the globe only to sell out in minutes. And after the dust settled, the truth was finally exposed. Scratched crystals, paint rubbing off on people's wrists, bioceramic cracking, fakes, poor quality control, and the list went on and on. Yet this tiny little watch took the world by storm, not just with collectors but fashionistas and sneakerheads. Not since the launch of the iPhone in 2007 has there been a launch that was not limited that has been this crazy especially not in the watch world. So what makes this any different? The culprit is affordability. This watch only costs $260, yet it bears a striking resemblance in the markings of a watch worth over $6,000. So who wouldn't want to own a piece of history dressed up in a little plastic clone? The specs of this watch are as follows. This watch is 42 millimeters in diameter. It is 13.25 millimeters thick. It has a 47.3 lug to lug. It has a 20 millimeter lug width. The case is bioceramic. Now, what is bioceramic? All right, you take one third biosourced plastic and mix it with two thirds ceramic, and boom, bioceramic was born. The movement is a four jewel quartz ETA caliber G10.212ND, no date. The crystal is plastic and it scratches very easily. The band is a two piece Velcro strap and the loom is super luminova. And honestly, under a black light, it kind of looks like what I imagined this watch looked like if it was in Chernobyl. But the pros and cons of this watch are as follows. I currently bought the mission to Uranus, and I happen to like Uranus. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Pro, honestly, through all the hype and hatred, this watch does offer a lot. From the S engraved logo on the dial, to the dot over the nine on the tachymeter, they even put every detail the Omega would have just on a McDonald's Happy Meal version of itself. Now, I really enjoy this baby blue color, and I think, you know, I've gotten a lot of compliments from this watch. Its baby blue dial and white strap really stands out when you're wearing it, and I think that it draws people's eyes in for a closer look. They also think it's an Omega. I mean, sure, for $300, that's probably the cheapest moon swatch you're gonna find out there. And it really does allow you to rock a moon watch without breaking the bank. It's weird, it's in a weird subcategory of an homage, and I respect the fact that I can proudly wear it without feeling like I'm rocking a fake. Because, like I said, it's in a weird subcategory of being an homage, but it's also able to bear the same markings 
of its original counterpart. So I kind of like the fact that I don't feel like I'm wearing a Pingani design. I feel like I'm actually wearing an Omega, just a plastic version. Con. Quality is, well, non-existent. It's plastic. It's got no sapphire crystal. It's got a Velcro strap. The second hands don't even align with the markers. Yet, I can't help but enjoy the goofiness of this watch. I mean, it it sucks, but at the, it's like a pug. It's so ugly, it's cute. This watch is the pug of watches. It's so shitty, it's good. I, I, if that makes any sense. Pro. I love how somewhat rare this watch is. I mean, I know it's not a limited run watch, but you would have had to either pay up to $700 from some jerk on the internet, or go to New York, which is my closest Swatch dealership, and find one for yourself. Now, sometimes you can get lucky and find one you like in a creepy Fiat Conquistador. Uh, I'm dead serious, they're actually uh, sending out little fiats to uh, pull up and offer you a moon swatch. Um, but the chances of you finding one that you want and getting your hands on the one that you absolutely loved um, without paying through the nose is extremely rare. So I like the fact that I'm wearing a watch that not many people out in the wild have. All in all, this watch has exploded the internet. And it started a new craze of collectors, so say what you want in the comment section below about what this watch has done, but it has brought more people to this hobby of watch collecting than any Rolex out there, alright? Including this one. So you have to respect its reach, because at the end of the day, we just want more like-minded nerds like us to enjoy watch collecting so that we can have someone to talk to about our passions in watch collecting. Now, if you didn't know, I'm selling NATO straps. I'm going to mention it one more time. I'm selling NATO straps, and if you want to get your hands on a limited edition uh, NATO strap, it really helps out the channel. The link is in the description below. It's $7, so you won't break the bank, and I have a little other nifty gifties on there as well. And remember, I'm not a watch snob, and neither are you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for your support. Sayonara. I'll see you next time.